now that we're familiar with how to solve systems of equations, we're going to start solving systems of equations in context. So let's write the word context here. And remember that context is the situation surrounding the numbers, the equations that uh, are produced from that situation. So let's take a look at this warm up. It's a quick little story problem, very short, a lot shorter than the ones we're going to deal with today. Um, but it'll remind us of some basic principles. So here it says 4 times a number plus 7 is 51. It says, what is the number? Write an equation and show your work. So 4 times a number uh, plus 7 is 51. We don't know what the number is, so we're going to use a variable to represent that. So we're going to do 4 times a number, so 4 times x we'll call that, then plus 7, so we'll add 7. Remember the word is means equals, so equals 51, and then we'll go through and we'll solve this. So we've got the equation part of it taken care of. Now let's go ahead and solve. So I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. That's going to give me 4x equals 44. We're going to divide both sides by 4, so we end up with x equals 11. So the number is 11. So if we were to answer this question directly, we would say the number is 11. So now that we know how to solve systems of equations, we need to look at some real world applications of being able to solve systems. And what this means is we're going to be solving so story problems in context. So whenever, whatever setting or situation those equations come up. Now because there are so many words and ideas floating around in these situations, it's going to be important to be organized and show all of our work and thinking. And part of keeping things organized is to define the variables we use. So let's write define the variables we use. And this is where we write down what x and what y represent or what d or t or whatever the variables use that we're using in a particular problem. We need people to understand when they look at our work what we were thinking when we were writing down an x or a y or whatever it is. So again, defining variables means we will write down all the variables we will use, usually x and y because we just kind of do those by default, and state what they represent. Uh, we will then write two equations, because we've got to have a system of equations. We've got to have more than one. And remember, most story problems end with a question. They tell us what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first example. And notice in the instructions it says define variables and write equations for each problem, then solve the problem by graphing. And you can use your calculator for this. So it says the sum of the first number and the second number is 16. The difference between the first number and the second number is 6. What are the two numbers? So let's take a look at this. Um, the sum of the first number and the second number is 16. And they also talk about this first number and second number. So we're going to do this. We're going to use an x and a y, and I've got these already set out for us. So this is going to be the first number, and y is going to be the second number. And when it says sum, remember a sum is an addition problem. So we're going to take x and we're going to add y, and it says that sum is 16. So when we add them together, we get 16. And then it says the difference between the first number and the second number is 6. So that would be x minus y. Difference is a subtraction problem, is 6. And then it says what are the two numbers. Well, if we're going to graph these on the calculator, let's go ahead and put these in a format that we can use. I am going to put a dotted circle around this, because if I can write that equation, I'm really well on my way to being able to solve this. So let's move the x to the other side. So this is going to be y equals, this would be negative x plus 16. So there's one of them. And then this one would be, I'd have to move the uh, x to the other side, so I'd have negative y equals negative x plus 6. And then I'd uh, divide both sides by negative 1. So I'm going to divide every term on both sides by negative 1. That's going to give me y equals, <coughs> this would be a positive x, and then minus 6. So that's what we're going to be graphing. So I'm going to grab the calculator. I've got the calculator up, and this is going to be very typical of what happens. We open up the calculator. Maybe it's a blank screen. Maybe it's not. I've already hit uh, clear on this. We want to make this graph the lines that we've got so we can figure out what the solution is. So we're going to hit y equals, and you'll notice that I've got two numbers or two equations in here. I'm going to go ahead and clear both of them off. So I start from uh, just fresh and clean, uh, totally nothing in here. So we're going to write down negative x. Again, the x uh, button is right here, the variable key right next to the alpha key, and then we're going to do plus 16, and then we come down here, and we're going to do x minus 6. 
Okay, so we've got the two of those, and then it wouldn't be a bad idea to just check and see where what the window is. So I'm going to hit Window. Looks like we're in the standard window, or rather than hit another button, we can just hit Zoom, and we can hit 6. It's going to graph it in the standard window. That's going to be a pretty decent window to graph these things in, and you'll notice what happens here. I can see both of these lines, but where they intersect is off the screen. So that's going to happen fairly often. We want to make sure that we can adjust this uh, so that we can have a window where we can see what's going on. Now, this before before we make adjustments, let's take a look at this. This is y equals negative x plus 16. This is going to cross at 16 and have a slope of negative 1. We're expecting to find a line that crosses way up here. Remember, this only goes up to 10 in the y direction. So it's got to cross at 16, and then we'd expect it to go down. So that's what we're, uh, we're imagining we'd see. And then this one crosses at negative 6 and has a slope of positive 1. So just just from this right here, we could have known that that window wouldn't work for us. We want to take a look at the intersection, and the intersection is definitely in this first quadrant right here. Remember, this is quadrant 1, and then we go counterclockwise, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. So we're going to come back here to the window, and we're going to adjust this. So I really don't need to see much of the negative side of the x-axis, so I'm going to put in here negative 2, and then let's say we go to like 20. Um, I think that would do it. Um, if not, we can come back and we can adjust. The scale, we're okay still having a tick mark every one unit. Um, and it looked like these would be okay here, but I'm going to get rid of that, uh, that large uh, uh, lower part of the y-axis. So I'm just going to do negative 2 here. And let's do um, positive, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and do positive 20 here. Okay, so we'll make them both the, the same. You don't always have to make them the same. We'll, we'll change those up in just a little bit. Um, and we take a look at this. Now notice I can still see the y-axis and the x-axis. Looks good. Now if you wanted to kind of confirm uh, where that one crosses the y-axis, if we hadn't already seen it, we could come back here and we could say, look, in the y direction, let's go ahead and keep this at negative 10, because we know we could see it before. And then let's hit graph couple things I want to point out as this is graphing. Notice how far apart the tick marks are on the x-axis and how close they are on the y-axis. This is definitely not a square window, but it gives us enough information that we can see what's going on. And then once we have this, again, it's very quick. We're going to do the same thing each time. We're going to hit second trace, which gives us calculate. We're going to hit number five because we want an intersection. It says, is that the first curve or is that the first graph? Yes, it is by hitting Enter. Is that the second one? Yes, it is by hitting Enter. We're close enough, so I'm not going to guess at all. Um, and you really don't have to guess. The calculator is pretty good at finding it. So this is going to be 11 uh, and 5. So 11, 5 is the answer on this one. So as an ordered pair, it's 11, 5. But remember what we said here, x and y. x is the first one, so the first is... 11 and the second is 5. Now if we double check this, if you add these together you do get 16 like it said and if you subtract the two of these you do get 6. So we've got the right answer right there. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. It says Elkridge Middle School is selling tickets to a musical performance. On the first day of the ticket sales, the school sold 14 adult tickets and 7 child tickets for $91. On the second day, they sold 18 adult tickets and 2 child tickets for $96. Find the price of an adult ticket and the price of a child ticket. Okay, so it ends here and tells us exactly what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the price of an adult ticket and the price of a child ticket. So we're going to make x the cost of an adult ticket. So I'm just going to use a dollar sign and write the word adult. And then y is going to be the cost of a child ticket. So we're going to write a dollar sign and child. So let's see what we've got here. On the first day of ticket sales, they sold 14 adult tickets and 7 child tickets for $91 altogether. So both of the equations that we write here, they're going to be about the total amount that they sold. So let's, let's say this. If these adult tickets were $1 a piece, if we sold 14 tickets and multiplied that by $1, that would mean that they would generate $14 in sales from selling those tickets. 
um, if those 14 tickets were two dollars a piece so let me write two dollars right here if those were two dollars a piece then they would make twenty eight dollars and this is very typical of how we how we'd set things up because there are lots of story problems that deal with money we're gonna take the number that we sell and we're gonna multiply it by the price and that will tell us how much money is generated by those sales so that would be forty two dollars so the price in this case happens to be X so we're going to take 14 times X, that's the money generated by uh, selling the 14 adult tickets, and then seven child tickets, so we're going to add money to that when we sell seven child tickets, so that's going to be seven times Y, and the total is $91. So there's the first equation uh, that represents the first day of ticket sales. 14 times the cost of an adult ticket, that's the money for the adult tickets. Seven times the cost of a child ticket, that's going to be the amount of money generated from the child tickets. And then we add those two amounts of money together to get the total amount for the day. So once we have that figured out, then we can use that same idea to write uh, down the equation from the second day. So 18 adult tickets, so that would be 18 times X then they sold two child tickets so two times y and they got ninety six dollars from from selling those tickets so once we get to here again this is the hardest part from here on out it's stuff that we're familiar with how to do so we're ginna take each one of these and we're gonna move them around and put them in slope intercept form so this one right here this would be seven y equals negative fourteen x plus ninety one I'm going to divide every term by 7. So this is going to give me y equals, this would be negative 2x plus, this goes in there 13 times, so there's one of them. And then this one right here, if we move that 18x to the other side, we'd have 2y, negative 18x. And this is why it's so important to have those good equation solving skills so we can do this stuff quickly, not spend a ton of time doing this. So we get y equals, and this is going to be negative 9x and then this would be plus uh, 48 okay so the other one is y equals negative 9x plus 48 so these are the two that we're gonna put into our calculator in order to have it graph that so I'm gonna pull up the calculator we'll slide this over um, and you're you're welcome to just you know clear this off go back to the y equals menu and start changing things that's what I'm gonna do if you want to start adjusting the window first that would be totally fine we are gonna talk about that in just a second so I'm gonna hit negative 2x and then we're gonna add 13 and we're gonna hit negative 9x and then plus 48 as long as we've got some good practice throwing these in there this goes very quickly um, I'm just going to go ahead and hit graph um, and see what happens. Now you might want to take just a second to look at this and think, gosh, is this going to be a very good window? Um, so let's go ahead and hit graph. Well, you can actually see where they cross. If we had gone back and we changed this to uh, the standard window, let's see what happens right there. So I'm going to hit zoom 6. It's going to graph that. Now more often than not you'll be graphing in the standard window. We happen to get lucky we can see the the point of intersection here. So we really wouldn't have to do anything else. Either one of those windows would have been fine to start with. But we should look at this and figure out, hey, you know, what's going on? This one would cross at 13. So 13 would be just off the screen about right here. This one's going to cross at positive 48, way up there. So if we wanted to get a really good picture of what this looks like, um, notice all of these values that we're dealing with. They're, we're talking about money and ticket sales, so they're going to be positive. So what I could do is I could come back here and I could change the window. We don't need to worry about, remember, X is adult tickets. We don't need to worry about any negatives, but I do like to see the X axis. So let's put negative 2, and let's go to like 18, and then we've got, uh, let's see, we don't need any negatives because that's the number of children tickets. And let's see, negative, we'll go negative 2. And then this one crosses at 48, so let's go all the way up to 50 and we'll graph that and then you'll notice something about the y-axis on this particular one. Um, again the x-axis is kinda spread out like we normally do but this goes from negative 2 all the way up to 50. We have a whole bunch of tick marks shoved in here so that makes things um, look uh, a little fatter than they ought to be but we can still see the point of intersection so 
any one of the points or any one of the windows that we chose to put up here, we've done three different windows, any one of these would be fine. I am going to hit zoom six. We're going to go back to the standard window. Since the intersection is on the on the, the screen, we'll be able to find it. So again, we're going to hit second calculate. We're going to hit five. We're going to say yes, yes, and yes. It's going to throw those in there and we end up with 5 comma 3. So x equals 5, y equals 3. So I'm going to write 5 comma 3. And remember this is x and this is y. Let's come back to the beginning of the problem. x is the price of an adult ticket. So adults are $5 and children are $3. And if you wanted to plug those into those those two equations, you'd be able to see that it does work out that way. That uh, that that price for the adult and the child tickets does work out when we plug them into those equations. Okay, let's take a look at another one here. Lots of different practice here. Um, it says a farmer has 38 animals. Some of them are chickens and others are cows. All together, these animals have 124 legs. How many chickens and how many cows does the farmer have? So again, it ends with a question, how many chickens and how many cows? So, so I'm going to do x is the number of chickens and y is the number of cows. And it says the farmer has 38 animals. Now, we could add a word here that would make this make a little more sense here. The farmer has 38 animals all together. So what that means, if you, if you take the number of chickens and the number of cows and add those together, you get 38. Some are chickens, some are cows. All together they have 124 legs. This 124 legs is the key. So let's stop and think about how many legs a chicken has. A chicken has two legs. So if we want to know how many chicken legs we've got all together, we would have two times the number of chickens. Cows have four legs, so this would be four times the number of cows. And then we would add the chicken legs together, and we would have the cow legs right here. We'd add them together, and we'd get 124. I know that sounds kind of funny, but think about what we're doing here. This equation right here is about animals, and this equation right here is about legs. It's very typical when you have a story problem that you'll have two different equations about two different things. This one is about the number of animals, and this one is about the number of legs. So let's go ahead and uh, write these in a format that we can put into the calculator. So we're going to move the x to the other side, so this would be y equals negative x plus 38. You might be thinking ahead um, how big a y-intercept we need on this one. Um, we're going to move the 2x to the other side, so this would be 4y equals, this is negative 2x plus 124. We're going to divide by 4, divide everything by 4, so we're going to end up with this, y equals, this would be negative 1 half x, 124 divided by 4. Um, if it were 12 divided by 4, we'd have a 3, so that 4 is going to go into 120 30 times, and then one more here, so this is going to be plus 31. Okay, so those are the, the uh, values and equations that we're going to put into the uh, calculator. Again, think about what our y-intercept would need to be so we can see this entire thing. You don't have to set it up that way, but it's not a bad idea. Um, I'm going to go back here to y equals, and we're going to put in uh, negative x. And I can just simply overwrite this stuff, negative x plus 38. Um, notice there's a 3 sitting on the end, so I'll just hit delete. Save myself some keystrokes by not uh, typing, uh, not hitting uh, clear first. So let's do negative 1 half. I'll just put it in as that uh, division problem. And then times x, again, because that's all multiplication and division, you can do that. And then plus 31. Again, I mentioned this before. If you wanted to put x uh, where the 1 is, kind of multiply these together, and just do negative x divided by 2, that would be totally OK. Let's set up the window. We know that we're talking about um, how many chickens and cows. Those have got to be positive. So here's what I'm going to do. In the x direction, we're going to go from negative 2. And we don't know how many cows or, or chickens there are. So let's, let's use a big number here. Let's say there might be 50. Okay, I don't think it's that big, but let's go with that. Um, I'm going to change the scale on this. We can change this. I'm going to put a tick mark every five units. And then in the y direction, I'm going to do negative 2. And then we've got to go all the way up to at least 38. So I'm going to go to 40. 
and I'm going to put a tick mark every five. What that's going to do is that's going to put fewer tick marks um, and we'll just know that on the axes we're counting by five. So I'm going to hit graph and let's see what we've got. Notice that this is all just basically the first quadrant here, all where we have positive x's and positive y's and that looks pretty good right here so we've got this one that crosses at 38 and comes down like this has a slope of negative one this one crosses at 31 has a slope of negative one half and then they intersect right there okay so we're in good shape here we've got the intersection point on here so again it's five quick uh, button pushes so we're gonna hit second calculate we're gonna hit the five then we're gonna say first curve yes second curve yes and we don't need to guess, we're just going to have it figured out. So we get uh, 1424. So these cross at 14, 24. And remember, this is x and this is y. So x is chickens, so 14 chickens. And uh, the y is cows, so this would be 24 cows. All right, so there's the answer to that problem right there. Okay, last one on this side right here. So it says, Mr. Ricks has seven, uh, excuse me, $500 in his account, and Mr. Campbell has $900 in his account. So this is how much money they started out with. Mr. Ricks is adding $50 per month, whereas Mr. Campbell is contributing $30 per month. Write an equation that represents the amount in each account and determine when they have the same amount. Hmm, let's see. So here's what we've got. Um, Mr. Ricks has $500 to start with and he's adding $50 um, into an account and Mr. Campbell has $900 to start with and he's contributing $30 per month. Okay. Well if you'll notice per month this is a rate. $30 per month. That is a rate. So those are both slopes. So here's what I'd say. Um, let's say that Y represents the dollar amount that we end up with and X represents the months that are going by. Now one way that we can tell that is if we write down the rate, and we've done this a couple times before, we've pointed this out, if we're doing fifty dollars per month, remember this is going to be Y over X, that's going to be what our rate is. The Y's go on the top and the X's go on the bottom. So since Y corresponds with the top, that's going to be dollars, and X corresponds with the bottom, that's going to be months. So we know we're going to set it up that way. And then let's write down one down for Mr. Ricks. And I'm going to do him in red, and I'm going to do Mr. Campbell in blue. So we're going to write down, he had $500 to begin with, so I'm going to write down Y equals, he's got $500 to begin with, that's his starting point, and he's adding $50 a month, so that would be 50X plus 500. Uh, might be a little more natural to write 500 plus 50x, um, but this is already in slope-intercept form. That's a little bit more typical. Okay, so there's Mr. Ricks. And then I'm going to change colors here. Same type of thing for Mr. Campbell. Um, Mr. Campbell is going to start with $900, and he's adding $30 per month. Okay, so there's Mr. Campbell. All right. And it says write an equation that represents the amount in each savings account and determine when they have the same amount. So you'll notice that the y, the, the thing that this equation equals, that is the amount. We've made the, that a dollar amount. So we're going to have the calculator do this. And notice these are pretty big numbers. So we're going to need to make sure that we adjust this um, to see what we've got here. So um, we're going to go back to y equals. We're going to do 50x, and we're going to keep track of the fact that this first one is Mr. Rick, so 50x plus 500. And then the next one is 30x plus, whoops, let me make sure I get the zero in there, 30x plus 900. And I've got that one there, so I better hit delete there. Okay, so I've got the two equations in here. Now let's stop and think about this. If we go to the, um, the window, we have to have a y-intercept at 500 and a y-intercept at 900. These are going to be huge. In fact, these dollar amounts are just going to get bigger. So they're actually going to, based on the slope, they're going to go up. The dollar amounts are going to go up. So we better have a pretty big one. Um, let's start off with like a thousand. Let's just take a guess there. Now we don't know how many, in the x direction it's months, so we don't know how many months this is going to take. I'm just going to leave it like that. Maybe it takes 50 months. That's over four years. But let's check and see. 
Um, so the scale, I'm okay with that. Uh, tick mark every five months. And then the Y minimum, um, let's let's keep it at negative two and see how that looks. And then we've got to go up to at least 1,000. So I'm going to hit 1,000 here. And if we put a tick mark every five, I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And I want you to tell me if that's a good idea. So we're going to go ahead and hit graph. Okay, one thing you notice is that this this y-axis is is really really fat and huge okay so all those tick marks just uh, jumble together this is that 500 for a y-intercept and this one up here is the 900 for a y-intercept and again they just go up to there remember the top of our window is at a thousand okay so we're gonna need to make that a little bit bigger um, I think based on this I think we're okay in the x direction so let's just come back here in the y direction totally okay with this let's guess that this would be 2000 so let's just double it now here's the cool thing um, if we're wrong we just come back here and we we hit another zero uh, make it go bigger change the numbers and we're all set I'm gonna put a tick mark every 100 so that's gonna put a tick mark every hundred dollars this one's putting a tick mark every five months alright we'll hit graph and we'll see what happens notice the y-axis automatically looks better that looks great and then we can actually see what's going on so this goes from negative 2 in the x direction to 50 months in the y direction and you can hardly see it here because this is so small this is negative 2 in the y direction and then all the way up to 2000 so we just want to find the intersection point so we're gonna hit second calculate we're gonna hit 5 and we're gonna say yep first curve second curve we do this all the time we just keep hitting those buttons and the intersection is 20 comma 1500 so the intersection is at 20 comma 1500 so remember what this represents X represents months and Y represents dollars so this is going to be in 20 months they both wait for my marker to catch up here they both have $1,500 okay all right, and there's the answer to that problem right there. Um, there are lots of places where solving systems of equations in context or in the in the context of a story problem are really useful. So great skill to have. I know this can be difficult and challenging, uh, but do your very best.